take it away. I will. Thank you. Uh, what a blessing to be with you so early in this new year. Um, we are excited. I am excited and my team here, my associates are excited about our next IIQTC level one teacher training. And so we're going to introduce the uh, our team and but first and we'll also uh, I'll show a PowerPoint program uh, that gives a, that will give you a lot of information about this training and uh, and we're recording it. So for those of you who aren't here right now, I'm glad you're here whenever you're listening. And it's typical for us to uh, play this gong at the beginning of our time together. And so I'm going to first I'm going to do a test gong just to be sure that it's ringing through and uh, Kristen, I can see you. So you'll give me a thumbs up if this is uh, ringing. OK. That's good. All right. So imagine yourself in the situation where you are a Qigong teacher or perhaps even uh, that you are have graduated from being a teacher and you're one of the trainers who's going to be co-leading this training with me. And imagine the thousands of people out there who right now in the region that you live in or in the social media group that you're involved with wish that someone would do Qigong so that they could attend. And then in addition to that imagining Let's do the three treasures, aligning your posture erect as possible, head on top, shoulders drop, deep breath and mind clear. So posture, breath and mind. So did you get that image? Posture, breath and mind got that. The image of myself as a Qigong and maybe even eventually Tai Chi teacher. And breathe into that, get a feel for what an amazing opportunity that is. And we have trained at the Institute of Integral Qigong and Tai Chi, we have trained over 3000 teachers and practice leaders and uh, have a vibrant uh, professional community of graduates. So I'm going to right now, I'm going to just uh, turn it over to uh, headquarters administrator Rhonda, who will say hello. And she's the person <laughs> who you may have already met as you try to get registered to be here today. Rhonda. Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm posting some items in our chat already. If you'd like to read about our faculty and get a little texture about their particular training, uh, the link is there. And then I'm also, if you have not signed up to be notified when this training launches, like just says specifically, I'm going to put a link in there for that. It's a little web form. You put your first name, last name, and email. You click and say, interested. We are launching next week. That's the goal. I'm thinking midweek. Um, I've, we've got a few things to complete before we do that, but I'm, we're looking forward to it. If you are in this Zoom room today and you are uh, new to Qigong, you can attend our, uh, we have a public rate. We have uh, our alumni rates for if you're a Tai Chi Easy practice leader or healer within medical Qigong practice leader, or if you've gone through all the IIQTC training, we have a review rate. So we have, we'll go into more pricing later, but welcome 
And uh, we're also going to do some practice today. So get excited because you'll get a taste of the teaching today. So thank you for coming. And I am Lori Formella, and I'm coming to you from the state of Wisconsin, a little village of Sherwood. And I am going to be one of the faculty for this online level one. I have produced two of them and have been uh, teaching Roger's teachings for, oh gosh, it's been like 12 years now. <laughs> And I started mainly for to help me rebuild my house after it was burnt down through some illness. And my passion, I bring to you a passion for these practices and really life practices. And I also think I bring a practicality. I have taught in our community at many, many, many places, mainly the older adult population. And so at all different organizations, you need to figure out how to adapt to the people in those organizations and kind of looking practically at what their needs are. And so I bring, I will bring that to you as well. And I'm looking, I'm, I'm hoping so many of you will sign up because it, you know, a lot of people think online, no, we can't do this online. Yes, we can. And what I have found over the last year and a half is that people walk out of this training more ready to go and teach than they are in a face-to-face. -face. So there is so much benefit to this. And I just, I hope you take advantage of that. And I'm going to turn it over to Oli, another faculty member. Hi, my name is Oli Smith. I'm coming to you from uh, the mountain town of Durango, Colorado. And uh, I'm also another one of the faculty uh, here with this group. This will be uh, my third time participating as a faculty for an online uh, training for uh, level one. And uh, my background primarily is Chinese medicine. Uh, I spend most of my time in the world of Chinese medicine and Qigong and Tai Chi. I've been practicing uh, Qigong pretty consistently uh, for about 25 years. I've been teaching Qigong and Tai Chi for about 15 years. And and that's kind of part of what I, I bring to this. I, I do feel that the IIQTC and the focus on principle over form is, is really where the, the power of this teaching lies and what makes it so accessible to so many people and, and so empowering to so many people. I really do feel that the principles are the same principles, the, the principles of Qigong and Tai Chi are the same principles that apply to physiology, that apply to anatomy, that apply to cosmology, that apply to spirituality. I feel they are keys that help to unlock all of these patterns that we, we see. And there's something inside of us that recognizes the, the profound importance of these patterns, even if we don't fully understand them. And when we can when we can spend time engaging with these principles, whether it's intellectually and talking about them, or more importantly, if it's embodying these principles through these practices that we learn, uh, I feel like that then unlocks these patterns and allows us to engage with them in a way that can change our lives and can, can really help to create a world that I think we're all interested in being a part of. So I'm really excited about um, sharing these practices with you and and to to witness as I witnessed uh, before the alchemical transformation that takes place when we engage with these principles in a in a heart centered way. So thank you for being here and uh, and I'll hand it on to our other esteemed faculty member uh, Jennifer. Hi everyone. And uh, yes, I'm Jennifer Weiss. I am from Bloomington, Indiana. And I too am super excited to be here. 
I have been teaching Qigong and Tai Chi for oh, about a little over 12 years. But I, before that, I bring a lifetime of, of true fascination with the body and with health and healing. Early on in my life, I got injured. And that set me on a course, uh, well, first of depression somewhat, <laughs> because the things that I loved to do were sort of snatched out of my hand. And it, it it caused me to investigate a number of healing modalities outside of the mainstream, complementary and alternative modalities. And it wasn't until I learned Qigong and Tai Chi that the emphasis on self-healing was brought home to me in such a significant way. And, and it was really a game changer for me. And it, I've been f completely fascinated with it ever since. I'm so excited to be part of the faculty. I, I assisted last year and I too was a little hesitant. Could this really translate into, uh, could the chi really translate? And, and it absolutely does. And in fact, by doing this training, you will not only be prepared to teach in person, but you will be able to teach online if you so choose. So there are, there are, many, there are many aspects of this training that are more ideal than an in-person experience, although that's wonderful as well. Uh, for me personally, the... Uh, the teaching itself was a bit of a leap, but I have found over the years that the teaching has actually given me so much more than I could have ever believed. So that if you're if you're hesitant about the teaching, I, I I strongly encourage you to dive in regardless because you learn so much more when you teach something. It, it you you have to by nature, and then you end up learning so much from your student, from your students over the years. I've taught at yoga studios uh, for the park district, uh, for senior centers. I've run my own classes in my backyard, as well as at friends' houses. So the opportunity to learn and embody these practices and share them with others is pretty much unlimited. It's, it's up to your imagination and uh, wherewithal and intention and willpower to carry those out. And I truly believe this is one of the best uh, training programs uh, in the U.S., uh, wor worldwide, actually, for, for teaching Qigong. So welcome, and I hope to see you in the training. And uh, I believe Kristen is next. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Jennifer. Um, yeah, I, I just, I, I can so much echo from the sentiment of, finding these practices as a way of kind of going through a transformation in my own life and transforming myself. So just thank you all for being here. Um, my name is Kristen Mussolino and I'll be your, your IT Zoom tech for this training. And I'm also an IIQTC uh, Tai Chi Easy Senior Trainer, which we'll talk more about you know down the road. I'm a licensed massage therapist as well from uh, New Jersey. And um, I've been teaching uh, integral Tai Chi and Qigong now since 2017, uh, from community classes to privates to free classes. And I did so during a huge change in my life. Uh, I was drawn to these practices because of my background in learning yoga and meditation at that time. But I was drawn to these uh, yoga and meditations because I wanted to cultivate more for myself. And I knew that I was the only person who could do that for myself. And these practices, learning these practices gave me methods to self-soothe and create self-love from within inside myself in ways that I didn't know possible and in ways that no pill were able to help me from my past. So basically I'm here to inspire any of you who are called to this, whether from a teaching perspective, because you want to teach or because you want to tap into your own innate inner power and connective power to all that is, um, and that many of the traditions of Tai Chi and Qigong have passed down through the time um, in memorial. So just thank you all so much for being here. Um, and uh, I look forward to seeing you uh, at the training if you decide to do so. And I, I believe that's all of us. So I'm going to send it back to our founder, 
uh, Dr. Rodrianka. Yeah, so thank you everybody. And as you can see, this is a team of real bona fide wizards uh, here in the 21st century, leaning in to being a part of how the world is a better place which is really the foundation. What is Qigong about anyway? So uh, I'm gonna share my screen and uh, allow me to just say that uh, I have too many PowerPoint slides and I'm gonna go through pretty quickly. So how we'll manage that is that um, there will be slides that you, you will be able to access a recording of this meeting so that if there's some information that you feel like I passed on too quickly, uh, because we want to also just do a little bit of practice, uh, have our, uh, our co-leaders and faculty members do a little bit of practice with you. And so this is a kind of a, an action-packed uh, experience. Uh, so off we go. <clears throat> there are people here who uh, we already know, gr graduates of the IIQTC uh, or graduates of the uh, Tai Chi Easy program through either the IIQTC or through the Healer Within Foundation. And so welcome to everyone. And one of the things to say about people who are trained and familiar with Tai Chi and Qigong coming into this training, we have a lot of people who have already been trained as teachers who are inclined to want to deepen their knowledge base as well as be able to make declarations and give teachings that are accessible to a wide range of, uh, shall we say, populations. So whoever you are among all those possibilities, welcome here. Uh, just a little bit on myself. I wrote a couple of books. I'm the founder of the Institute of Integral Qigong and Tai Chi. Uh, have been a uh, teacher for all the way back into the uh, 1970s. Um, a clinical career as a doctor of Chinese medicine for over 35 years. Uh, pretty constantly on the internet presenting it at uh, summits and, and, and traveling around doing conferences. Co-founder, uh, uh, actually I'm a consultant in the healthcare field, which is pretty interesting. I've been in hospitals. I've actually lectured to the, uh, to the uh, American Medical Association, the American Hospital Association. I'm uh, one of the co-founders of the National Qigong Association, and I hope you are a member, and if you're not, I hope you'll look into it nqa.org and I have been to China 10 times to be sure that I got as much information as possible to bring to my students and to train you to bring to your students. So faculty for our online training that's coming up in March through May, we won't be talking about explicitly every date um, but you'll get information on that pretty easily as you pursue uh, some clicks that have to do with in further information and registration. And you've met these people already, so I'm going to go on to let you know that we're also doing a live training uh, at the Omega Institute in uh, Rhinebeck, New York, uh, June 21st through the 28th. The details about the training that we'll be talking about today are for this event online. Um, but should you be someone who's inclined to just want to do this uh, at the Omega Institute in New York, what a beautiful facility, et cetera. And so we'll have a, a, a different training team there. And these are all people, all these trainers are just incredible. Uh, articulate, knowledgeable, friendly, accessible, etc. So <clears throat> we have reunions. Uh, our last reunion was in 2019. We're looking, it's, it's on the 
planning table now to have a reunion some, somewhere out ahead. And everybody who's ever graduated from any of our programs, our training programs, are invited to our graduate reunions. So it's a big, big value add that the IIQTC does uh, by sustaining a uh, vibrant professional community. And we also have a Facebook page where there's a lot of dynamic activity. We'll talk a little bit about those going forward. Uh, just want to remind you, these are things that you may already know or that you may be interested to be sure are a part of this training. We already talked about the body, breath, and mind as three treasures. So let me go on while this uh, slide is showing and reflect on the fact that the white picture above is associated with the boundlessness of the universal sky, heaven, cosmos, whatever you want to call that. And the black circle below is associated with the earth, which is bounded and substantial. And the, the part in the middle is what we call Tai Chi. The yin yang symbol isn't called the yin yang symbol. It's called Tai Chi Tu. Tai Chi Tu means the map of Tai Chi. And the map of Tai Chi is basically a map of the dimensional world. That is the space time world that we live in. And uh, it's connected to a trans dimensional world which Qigong and Tai Chi offer a way to be able to get into a portal of timelessness. You know, if you're inclined to these kinds of uh, very fascinating uh, philosophical ideas. So the body, we're going to train you to teach people how to do what we're looking at right now. And I won't linger here, but I think you get the picture. The breath. Uh, one of my favorite ideas about the breath is that when you say long, slow, deep, the acronym for that is LSD breathing. So let's take a, an LSD breath right now, long and slow and deep. And part of what we get into in our trainings is physiology. And so you'll learn the physiology of why a long, slow, deep breath is a, a long story about that other slide down there with the anatomical pictures, then the, the mind. So the body, the breath, and the mind are the three treasures of Qigong. And how do we use Qigong to be able to become coherent between our thinking self and our feeling self? It's probably the most important thing that a human being can learn to do, and nobody really teaches us that. You don't learn it in church. You don't learn it in school. You might learn a little bit of it in, as an athlete, but probably not that much. Uh, because actually, if you're football or basketball, you want to be angry and really get it going. But then, you know, is that really harmonious? Well, during the game, absolutely. But in life, what about relationships and community and so forth? So, the foundation, body, management, purposeful, heart, mind, that's the, that's the, uh, uh, the, the whole concept of consciousness and breath all coming together. Now here's some uh, links and I'm not going to linger here. So you will have to come back to this slide. When you get the, when you get the recording, there will be a PDF of these slides and you can just j jump right to where all these um, are. I just want to point out that there's a lot of information on the web. And then we have what we call the free Qigong library online. And there'll be a link to that. Rhonda will probably provide that link to you. So this is a no cost access to a large library of videos, keynote lectures, book chapters, and audio files. So at the very minimum, if we don't get to see you at a training, uh, you can go ahead and use that library because it's available to the public. 
So the training that we're talking about now is starting in March, March 14th, and concluding on May 16th. And it has two, it has three modules, but it has two parts. Part one is videos that you do on your own time. You get credit for the hours that you spend reviewing these videos. And then the second part is Zoom meetings where we all get together and we have lectures and practice sessions and we do practicum, which basically puts you into a relationship with a few other people in a Zoom breakout room and you practice teaching so that by the end of the training, uh, you are ready to go. And we suggest that people start teaching right away. In fact, you can even start teaching before the end of the training if you decide you want to do that. Uh, now, the four baskets of practice, how is that different than the three treasures? It's not very. Um, it's just the addition of massage. So the traditional operational definition of Qigong is coordinating body, posture and movement, massage, self-applied, breath, where you become highly aware of how you are breathing and learn how to modify your breath no matter where you are, in the car, <laughs> on the toilet, texting, shopping. The breath is one part of Qigong that can be implemented almost anywhere. And, uh, and then mindfulness, of course, which has to do with consciousness as we have described. <clears throat> These principles are going to be a part of the training, and I'm not going to linger on or describe them. Um, it's for you to know for today that there's this and a whole lot more that you will be uh, exposed to as the curriculum. And as Oli mentioned, the IIQTC is less concerned about forms, although you're going to see a list in a few minutes of many forms that we will use in this training. But those forms are all utilized to be able to, tra um, to export into the mind and body of, the, of your students these principles. Because these principles are going on all the time right now. Like think about what's your posture right now. Think about how relaxed you are right now. Think about how could you change your your uh, your breath right now. And then that's what Qigong is for, to embody the principles in life. So you as a Qigong teacher are back basically midwifing people from who they were and who, into who they might become. It's <laughs> such a compelling uh, life work. There's lots of science at this point. It's just piling up uh, on these uh, naturally occurring internal self-healing and functional maximizing mechanisms. And uh, this is one of those slides that you're going to want to come back to the PDF and uh, have, a, have a look at because there's this is all from the science. So someone like me or maybe even someone like you says, well, I don't care about the science. I think that Qigong is awesome, but the world cares. And this science makes what we do more credible. And so um, this is here for you to learn more about should you be inclined to do so. And of course, all of this is going to show up in one way or another as a part of the training. So this concept of Qigong masters having insights about all of this millennia ago, it doesn't say one millennia ago. In fact, if you do the research and dig in deep, it's almost impossible to understand that the Chinese shamanic tribes would not have developed something like Qigong somewhere around uh, 50 to 100 to maybe even 300,000 years ago. Why? Because the human gene is 3 million years 
And humans, monkeys communicate with each other. So humans, when they started being humans, they were already communicating with each other. You can imagine them saying, I'm tired. Uh, and imagine someone else sitting across from that at the fire saying, well, how's your sleep? And, you know, are you doing your Qigong? <laughs> so this whole idea of understanding the natural capacity of a human is just remarkable. And then there's this common denom denominator that we call qi. <clears throat> what is qi? Is it just electricity? Or is it consciousness? Or, or is it the dark matter in the universe that pervades all space, no matter what universe you're in? It's a beautiful uh, question. And one that Qigong invites us to consider constantly as a part of our life. And as we check this out, develop our own personal philosophy. Qigong, Tai Chi, Yoga, Kung Fu, mindfulness, they're all in invitations to believing in the fact that we can develop our own personal philosophy no matter whatever anybody else says. So we teach you to be aware of these four levels of Qi. And this is all from a book that I wrote called The Healing Promise of Qi, which is one of the textbooks for the course. The uh, energy at the physiological level, in other words, function. The energy at the uh, internal electron exchange level, call that the uh, ions that are uh, being uh, transported through what are called ion channels. Uh, a magnetic field, uh, physics will tell you that um, if you have ions doing whatever ions do, it's impossible not to have a magnetic field, uh, which is not limited to being inside of the body. It's actually a field in and around the body. And then th the uh, level, the fourth level of chi is the quantum field. And as a Qigong and Tai Chi teacher, you will be experiencing uh, your own exploration and discovery around these energetic concepts. So when you come to a training, you get to learn about the concepts but then you get to live into these concepts. And one of the things that we say to about uh, teaching is that most of these concepts are gonna go over the heads of all the people in your class. So you're gonna be taking this in and digesting it for yourself, but then you're going to be invited, and it's really easy to do, to bring to your students what you know that they can tolerate. So you might not be talking about the quantum field or the magnetic field or even the ions. You might just be talking about the physiology, which is everybody knows like, you know, I've got a heart, I've got lungs, I've got a liver, I, I've got pain in my knees. I know that it's a metabolic uh, circumstance. Uh, you know, I think these uh, practices are helping me with that. So you're gonna learn all of it and become a wizard at how to articulate that message so that it lands perfectly for most of the people in your class. Remember, Lincoln said, you're never gonna be able to satisfy everybody every time. So what we try to do is teach you how to satisfy as many of the people in your class as possible, as much of the time as possible, knowing that there's always gonna be interesting characters who come to your class who uh, anyway, we'll learn more about that in the training. So let's go to the science now. This goes all the way back to 1991 when science began starting to talk about the per percentage of all disease that is pre preventable. At this point, that number has risen to 85%. So in 2024, we're talking about an 85% of all disease, all doctor visits, all surgeries, all everything 
is pre preventable and you will be you probably already are inclined to be interested in how does that work how do we turn on the healing resources within well qigong and tai chi of course and then from 1993 like a long time ago it was already known that eight out of nine causes of disease are preventable so what has medicine done about that like nothing it's just in cahoots with the uh, pharmaceutical industrial complex or a part of the medical industrial complex so there's no motivation over there to inform citizens it's it's up to us so being a teacher actually becomes an act of patriotism uh, here's a, uh, a an, an article that was published in the american journal of health promotion i was fortunate to be the lead author on it the second lead, lead author is one of the graduates of, of our uh, Qigong and Tai Chi teacher training program. And basically what it found was that the number of, and this is all the way back in around uh, 2010, the number of scientific studies that demonstrated that Qigong and Tai Chi combined as two different things that people could be learning, uh, how many studies found that these were safe and effective? So cardiovascular, Tai Chi and Qigong, safe and effective, proven by over 25 randomized controlled trials. Those are, that's the gold standard in research. Balance, enhancing balance and re, uh, eliminating falls, neutralizing falls, over 20 uh, randomized controlled trials proved that qigong and tai chi assist people with safely and effectively to to maintain their balance neuropsychological uh, trauma uh, extreme trauma anxiety depression but also including uh, uh, parkinson's disease over 15 almost 20 trials randomized controlled controlled trials proved that qigong and tai chi are safe and effective for neuropsychological challenges so what are some of the benefits of becoming a teacher well it's for yourself for your health and discipline for your livelihood and your professional portfolio of resources that you can get hired or sell yourself as an as an entrepreneur for the learners it's all about building knowledge towards being a more shall we say responsible citizen is a responsible citizen is going to do everything they possibly can to be a part of how the society is better so what does you becoming a tai chi teacher do for society well it's for yourself, for your family, for your local community, if you teach uh, locally, and for the global community, even if you only teach locally, you're one of thousands and thousands of Qigong and Tai Chi teachers all around the world. Well, what about economics? Uh, we already talked about the fact that uh, expensive diseases are preventable, so there's a big money savings for our society, the more people that are doing Qigong and Tai Chi. But then do people who cultivate their mind, which includes the ego, by the way, do people who cultivate their mind and their ego, do they kill other people? Or do they order the killing of other people? Um, it's a complex conversation, of course, but personal view, Peaceful people don't tend to make war. It's just like that. And Qigong and Tai Chi cultivators tend to be more disciplined around their um, anger and their reactiveness. And then for the world, health and shared values. You know, imagine, just imagine if more than 50% of all the people in the world were doing yoga, Tai Chi, Qigong, and mindfulness. What would that world look like and who would those voters elect? 
so who were, uh, who and where are the IIQTC graduates? So why don't you read the top list of who these people are, starting with uh, <laughs> librarians. We've had a lot of librarians. We've had a lot of uh, lawyers, uh, just for your interest. And then I'll read the list below. Where are these people teaching? Schools, universities, hospitals, clinics, social service agencies, community centers, faith institutions, veterans facilities, spas, fitness centers, stress mastery programs, golf clubs. Yeah, people who want to get the edge on golf will study Tai Chi and Qigong, yoga centers, corporations, and more. What are the keys to the IIQTC? International credibility, recognized leadership, authentic roots, training in methods and theory, training in teaching methodology, participation in research, uh, publishing. Numerous of our uh, graduates have published. Strong professional alumnus. Uh, we have a Facebook group. Uh, we have a four times a year newsletter on the solstices and the equinoxes. We list you in your in the find a teacher directory if you're inclined to want to be found. Uh, advanced leadership training. That's what these uh, faculty members that are here today. That's how they got into those positions. Continuing education, web re web resources, and it doesn't even mention robust and rich community of people with shared values. Now think to yourself, like, how do I share values with the other people in my family, the other people that are in my neighborhood? And wouldn't it be amazing to hang around with people who are kind of hopped up on, fascinated with, and pursuing Qigong? Uh, we're getting towards the end of our time together here uh, for these slides. At the Institute, um, you will learn and practice and learn to teach the foundations of Tai Chi and Qigong. Tai Chi is level two and their applications, uh, broad applications. Uh, a wide array of dynamic and moving forms. We'll be talking about that in a few moments. The 10 levels of Qi cultivation and mastery, which is the foundation of every kind of Qigong that is anything more than an exercise, like a physical exercise, the relationship between chi and uh, prana, chakras, energy systems, quantum nature of healing, and so forth. Healer within medical qigong for the millions. Part of what we, we, we teach you is a very, very entry-level uh, form of qigong, uh, which just because of the title of the book that I wrote is called The Healer Within Qigong. Um, but it is medical Qigong, but it's not medical Qigong where you need a diagnosis. Uh, it's medical Qigong in the context of traditional Chinese society, which is that any Qigong that is utilized to manage a medical situation is called medical Qigong. And there's a whole spectrum of different types of medical Qigong, very powerful. And um, down there, you can see the link iiqtc.org. If you look around, you'll find curriculum, documents, and so forth there. But most of the information will be in the registration page, which you will be receiving, receiving an email on very soon. So how to teach safely. Modify the practices for special, special clinical circumstances. Not so much diagnosing. We are not doctors. We're educators initiate and manage classes. So these people that are going to be your teachers, they are part of their credentials is that they are active teachers and they know how to run classes and, and everything that has to do with that whole side of things. Resources to help you manage and market your business, calculate your compensation. We can do a little of that in the training and we can, we're working on some uh, continuing education on even more about uh, promotion and marketing and sales. Uh, Web-based support, free membership site. 
pay Facebook page. <clears throat> so level one pretty clearly is all about Qigong. And so I'm not going to linger on this slide. We've done level ones since the uh, year 2001. Uh, we've done many level ones in some years and at least one level one in most years. And the first year of COVID, we were stunned just like everybody else. So you will learn <clears throat> this beautiful process of the Taoist medicine wheel. You'll learn to teach the seven precious gestures, which is a uh, just a, a beautiful kind of heart opening practice. Uh, the, here's the list of the methods and forms. So vitality enhancement method, that's the same as healer within medical Qigong. Nine phases integral Qigong, seven precious gestures I just mentioned. Connective tissue transforming Qigong, you may know it as tendon changing. Guolin's walking Qigong, a fairly contemporary, uh, very popular version of Qigong from China. Marrow bathing, which is the same, uh, we do the marrow bathing, uh, the marrow bathing in a relationship with the Taoist medicine wheel, which has to do with deep, deep levels of uh, reverence for nature and the powers of nature. And uh, wow, there's connective tissue transformation again. And then we also learn the. Uh, the nine phases, and we investigate the 10th phase, which is called Qi transmission, which is now the whole process of devoting your practice to helping other people. And there's a whole, uh, you know, thing about that. So you are enabled, encouraged, informed, and inspired to begin teaching following the training. And I would add to begin teaching, some of you already do teach, uh, to begin teaching as as soon as you want to. Uh, there's there are really no Qigong police out there, and Qigong has been proven to be safe and effective, and you know that it's very very mild, and we will teach you to be sure that you don't get into the business of diagnosing, and suggesting particular things for people to do relative to particular ailments because that's not teaching anymore, that's therapy. Um, but there's a lot of ways to be able to encourage people to know, learn, discover how to put together a, tra uh, a uh, practice for themselves uh, that and you will be trained to teach people to support them, teach them and support them in, in believing in themselves to the extent that they understand that you're not going to tell them what you think they should do. You're actually going to be present as an exemplar to support people in understanding that they're allowed to pay attention to themselves and learn about themselves and even decide what to do in their practice sessions when they're not in your class. Uh, integral Tai Chi level two, uh, based on the essence of Tai Chi, we just finished our first level two online and we were s just thrilled to find that people really preferred to be trained online. And it has to do with the fact that if you do the training in seven days on site at a retreat center, it's expensive to be at that retreat center. It's expensive to get to that retreat center. And these online trainings can be spread out because we're not traveling. So there's time for integration. It's actually just incredibly inspiring how the whole online thing kind of turned out to be just like a really good thing. And then level three is uh, what we call alchemy. It's advanced uh, chi cultivation. And um, it's really kind of putting the cart in front of the horse to get too busy discussing that. But just understand that it really goes to the deeper levels of both esoteric information and physiological information and uh, some of the traditional texts like the Tao Te Ching and Zhuangzi and so forth, Secret of the Golden Flower. 
uh, as a teacher, you bring wisdom. And I'm just going to let you read this later. I want to be sure that we get to our little practice session here. And so you can read these uh, as we go. Here is a uh, testimonial, testimonial for someone who's been through this training. There's just something warm and special and loving about the IIQTC tribe. I love being a part of it. I love being in the presence of it. The resonance is like a warm embrace. So not only do you have the, are you empowered to teach others, but you're in this community of people with shared values. And trip to China, trainings, reunion. You can see these happy faces. I'm not sure we're going to be going to China anymore, but I'll bet that some of our graduates will actually pull themselves together at some point and say, come on, let's go to China. Okay, so here's just some very basic information. The Zoom gatherings are spread out from March 14th to May 16th. There's spaces in between. You'll be watching videos from a very uh, comprehensive uh, training portal that you will access upon being uh, registered. The exact dates are in the training information, which you'll be getting soon. The phase two part, the part where we're online together at Zoom, uh, each of the videos f will be released. The, each of the segments of videos will be released right before you go into a particular phase. So. Phase one, you'll get pretty quickly on registration. Phase two, you'll get right away after phase one and so forth. So we do this in such a way as to not overwhelm you. Early bird discount is going to be available till uh, February 19th. And that's a huge discount from the uh, late registration. So put on your thinking cap and ask your questions and uh, we will be receiving your emails and you'll be receiving a, uh, this video and some follow-up encouragement. So now let's talk about what is the value of all this. The videos from part one, that's gonna, that's gonna be a, a like close to 20 hours of video. And, and so the, these videos have actually been sold to the public in one way or another and we've estimated their total value as a, as a value of about $1,000. Then there are two other elective videos in, the seri in a series that you receive uh, that's worth about $600. When the training is complete, we're gonna send you for free as a gift the Breath Medicine Video Library, which usually costs people $179. So if you just total those all up, you get $1,679. So this training for $1,700, you're getting like almost $1,700 worth of video material. And then on top of that, you get all of these meetings where we're together with lectures and practice and so forth. So I don't know. I mean, that just seems pretty darn compelling. Um, payment plan expires uh, February 19th, so keep that in mind. Invite a friend to enroll. You will want someone to take your classes over when you want a break. So whether you're teaching online or teaching live, how cool will it be to bring a friend and uh, do this together so that you can be uh, you know, supporting each other, peer coaching, and then that person can stand in for your classes when you want to go on vacation. Here's the free library. Uh, this iiqtc.org slash member. Rhonda will be putting that into the uh, into the um, into the chat. And then we also have a YouTube page which has got 44,000 subscribers. One of our videos has actually got over 2 million views. And also check out the Qigong, the Tai Chi and Qigong Way group on Facebook. Um, perhaps Rhonda will put that address in there too, uh, which has over 12,000 subscribers, which is basically just a forum for people who are interested in Tai Chi and Qigong to 
come and say something or read something. It's very dynamic. Q&A. So we're on to Q&A and you will get these addresses uh, from either the email that's coming to you or in the chat or both. So here comes stop share and I'm just going to turn it over to the maestros and off we go. Thank you, Roger. And we are going to go to Q&A. That was a lot of information. And we, to respect your time, we're going to do Q&A and then we're going to uh, end with so, uh, some of the practices that we're going to be going over. Just a taste. It's like you're going to get a bite of the apple. I know you're going to want to eat the whole apple, but you're going to get a bite of it tonight. <laughs> So any questions, do any of you have any questions regarding the training or the IIQTC? How, how can we Just really you? quickly for everyone, the best way for us to facilitate the Q&A, if at the bottom of your Zoom screen, you go to your little reactions button, there's a raise the hand feature at the bottom of Zoom. And if you could just raise your hands, that would help us so much. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Nikki, it looks like Nikki has a question. Yes, hi, thank you. This was very informative. Um, thank you all so much. My question is regarding the live sessions. I noticed that some of the dates correspond with some uh, dates that I will be traveling for business or in conferences that are that I have to do because that's my day job. So I was wondering how that will affect the attendance or the certificate if I'm not able to attend a live session. Attendance is required in order to get your certificate. This is a teacher training and it's, it's a lot of practice. And so we do require attendance. If you have a, a couple of instances where you need to miss you know, one of the trainings, there will be a makeup session for each module, but there is an additional fee for that because we have to get a faculty member to work with you to help you make that session up. The neat thing about the videos though is, is that you can review the video and then come to that makeup session with your questions. Okay, great. Layla. Kenny has has her hand raised. Yes, thank you. Thank you for um, for this information session. I was wondering if, um, like Nikki, I might have some conflicts with some of those dates uh, for the live um, Zoom meetings. So I was wondering if you guys are planning on maybe offering this again later in 2024, or is this something that you offer every year around the same time in the spring? I, well, we do have the face-to-face -face this year, but I don't think there'll be another online this year, but and highly likely there'll be another one in 2025, but we don't know the dates yet. Gabriel. Hello, Hello. thanks for having me, everyone. Um, I do have a couple of questions, and uh, one being, I think you've already just answered that with the uh, Zoom calls, and lectures primarily, uh, you know, obviously I know we have to be there to attend to these classes, uh, but perhaps, perhaps if we want to refer back to it, even after the training, uh, you know, we've graduated or completed the certification, uh, that we can refer back to this material. Is this something available for us or, or is this something? Oh, yes, that's another, another awesome benefit is you will have you will have the videos that you're going to review prior to the training, and then you're going to have the replay videos of the training available to you for your lifetime. That, so that is it, pretty good, yeah. It is. It's an awesome resource. So the other, uh, I have two more here. The uh, other two, I know uh, there was a mention of two books, I believe. Are they the texts we will be using or is there additional material like PDFs that we will have uh, provided to us as students? Uh, the texts are um, highly recommended, especially the, the Healer Within, uh, the Healing Promise of Chi. The books have 
even more information than we are going to be able to go through in the training. And I know my book is so well used. So we highly, highly recommend that you, you get those books. All of the practices are in the books that we're going to go over. So, so yes, it's, it's, uh, the books are support of the learning sessions, but also go beyond. You will get a manual. Also, you'll get some PDFs that are going to support your learning. Uh, but again, those books are invaluable. Okay. Does that Great. help? Yeah, it does, because I, I actually have the books. I was like, all right. Let okay, me... off. great. Well, then you're ahead of the game. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Uh, so I do have two more here. Uh, one of them being, um, uh, one of the things that had drawn me to this training course of several other, you know, Tai Chi slash Qigong practices is scientific approach. The, there's more evidence here because I have a background in uh, performance psychology. And one of my passions behind that is providing something that's a bit, tangible because there's a lot of talk of more esoteric stuff of self-healing and there's nothing for me against it it's just uh, i'm pretty sure others can relate that i think he said this too earlier um uh, having because some people do care having this evidence and information can can bring more uh buy-in i suppose for people to to start considering these practices and my question here is because there's a, uh, i've seen in the slides quantum field and um the emotional, mental or emotional bodies. Is there more discussion here in this training? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Go right. Want to take yeah. that? So <clears throat> we're very aware of the, uh, shall we say, the, the yin and the yang that you just described. You know, a bias in this society largely to the tangible and the quantifiable. Um, and a curiosity, uh, just about anybody is curious about, well, what, what is there about the quantifiable side of things that are sort of beyond what I usually think about? So that might be like uh, uh, gene, modifying gene function, uh, enhancing telomere function, uh, the whole idea of replicating and, and, and enhancing the number of uh, mitochondria, so mitochondrial uh, fitness. And, you know, these are pretty, these things start to generally drift towards the place where the chi discussion takes off. So what we do is we train you to be as informed as possible as a, shall we say, a mainstream teacher to a mainstream audience. But we be sure to, because Qigong is so deep and, and so broad, we train you as well to understand, we'll just call them esoteric concepts, or maybe we could call them traditional concepts. And so you will have all of that, but then you will probably be delivering all of this. And, and uh, what I mean by this is because of what you said about your interest, you know what the National Library uh, is, PubMed and all of that. And you can go and put in, you know, Qigong and Parkinson's disease and get statistics. If you go to, once you're involved with the IIQTC as a, as a graduate or maybe even as a student, I can't remember which, you can go to our Facebook uh, group, which has got about a thousand of our uh, graduates. One of our graduates is the uh, is the director of what's called the Qigong Institute, and he is posting from PubMed constantly. So once you have access to that page, you can just go in there and click through to all these articles that basically are addressing the concerns and considerations that you're saying are important to you. And so I think in terms of comprehensive, we got it both. And then our goal is to support you in being our, uh, informed in the concept of discernment around who's in your class. Because sometimes you're going to be in front of a group of people who want to know about the quantum and you will know. 
unless you just don't have any interest in it at all. And some people will want to know, well, what about the research on uh, uh, managing cardiac events? And so you'll have that too. And then everybody who graduates, remember at the end of a high school or college, you go to a thing called commencement. Now, why would you be at the end of something and then somebody telling you a long story about your only commencing? That's because you've created a foundation upon which to launch your own personal uh, study, learning, and philosophical system and biases and career. That's not our job. That's your job. So we, it's like, uh, what do we call that? A um, liberal arts education. This is a liberal arts uh, Qigong and Tai Chi education from which you then blossom yourself in whatever direction you wish. Thank you, doctor. I, I appreciate that. Um, my last question, I'm sorry if I'm taking up much time. Uh, this is just something so I've been thinking about and wanting to get into is just like, I'm very fortunate that we're actually having this uh, video and talk. But the last one, which is what really got me into it is because of a recent disability four years ago. Uh, I believe her name was Jennifer, uh, Miss Weiss. I'm sorry if I said it wrong, but you, you kind of spoke on something that just got to me because I, I understand and can relate when there's a life changing event that limits you from seeing hope and positivity. And this injury has now reached osteoarthritis in my left ankle. And it's like, man, you hear all these great things about Qigong and Tai Chi and, and how there may be so many physical changes and opportunities to self heal. And I've had such a tremendous amount of self doubt with my ankle, like can people like myself with disabilities or pain, is there still ways to use and do perform and get involved as a teacher, teaching others? Like, are we still credible and perceived as such? Jennifer, it's to you. Um, yeah. I'm so glad what I said resonated with you. And uh, absolutely, I would say, of unequivocal yes to what you are contemplating and thinking about in terms of recovery and self-healing. So so for me, what what absolutely captivated me about these these um, uh, practices was the was the supercharging of my own capacity to self-heal way beyond. So when I I had I had two different knee surgeries and my knees never felt the same until I went to see traditional Chinese uh, medicine doctor and I started, uh, I started a, a regimen of acupuncture. And I almost was brought to tears after that because it was the first time my knees started to feel like what they felt like before my injuries. And then, to, and that was years before I even um, studied Qigong and Tai Chi, but then to come across Qigong and, and self-applied massage and to realize that I could take it literally into my own hands, my own healing, and, and, and then to share it with others, it, it, it's, it's a tremendous opportunity we have here. And it's inspiring when people do come back, right? That whole story, it's not how many times you get knocked down, it's how many times you get back up after that. And just the fact that you're here and you're interested in this, I, I would say, go for it. You're going to be a tremendous teacher and, and the pain and the struggle and everything's going to be worth it because you turn it around and it starts with informing yourself both of, yeah, the science and then the, the, the thing that's not so quantifiable is, is that is that quantum connection and, and it has to do with refining our personality. So we see things through the lens of our personality. But when we can um, clear away the obscurations of that personality that's bound in space time, and we can start, start to sort of touch the hem of the garment, if you will, or the divine that's in the silence, the nothingness that is everything, you know, it gets, it gets pretty incredible. So does that answer your question? <laughs> I'm excited. I, I, it does. Yes. I'm just, my brain is just like processing. So I definitely want to take any more of anyone's time. Thank you guys so much. I definitely look forward to getting involved.
Thank you. Right. So glad you're here. Eva. Okay, Eva. Hi. Um, can you hear me okay? Nope. Hello? Yeah, yes. There she is. No. Okay. There you are. All right. I just want to say I'm so excited to be here. I've been interested in Qigong and Tai Chi for so long, and I'm so enlightened and inspired by you all and learning about this. I'm a nurse. I just recently became a nurse coach. I've been practicing yoga, and I want to help people heal. And um, I've been uh, looking into, you know, using Chinese medicine to heal myself um, from Lyme disease recently. And anyway, I'm so excited to begin this journey and learn learn Tai Chi and Qigong and add it to be able to help people heal. And I was curious if you are going to offer, I'm, I'm interested in the online, but I'm also curious if you will offer any in-person training as well in the next year. Yes, there is a, a, an in-person training at Omega. Uh, Rhonda, what are the dates again? Uh, June 21st or 28th. I'll put it in the chat. Uh, let me put that in there. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you. It's a beautiful it... place to do a training. <laughs> Omega Institute is a beautiful place to do a training. Where is that? Hudson uh, Valley. New York. New York, Hudson Valley. Okay. And is that does that encompass all three of those same... Um, levels that you are going to be doing in the online the, this is level one and that training is level one as well level two and level three are additional trainings oh okay okay all right and so the uh, training from march march to may is level one correct okay yeah all right all all levels are two about uh, 200 hour full training so this is one third of that 200 hour training level one okay all right and then will level two be offered in the next year as well yes level two it will be offered i believe later this year in the okay. fall. yeah yeah in the fall okay great thank you Welcome. yeah i look forward to seeing you uh at omega it's amazing Thank you. Ellen. Hi. Uh, Ellen, you need to unmute. Okay, I just did that. Okay, there can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, first of all, thank you for, for doing this um, session. It's really been very instructive. And uh, Roger, thank you so much for everything. Thank you for your work. Um, I've been in a couple of shift network classes with you and seen you speak um, many times as well. So. Um, I very much appreciate it. Um, mm. I guess my question has to do with the fact that um, I consider myself a relative newbie uh, to Qigong. I've not done any Tai Chi. Um, I've been practicing for probably four years or so. I now have a daily practice or nearly daily practice. Uh, and I'm very, very drawn to it. And a lot of my professional background very much overlaps with um, a lot of what what the concerns are and what 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 you know what you're going to be addressing um, in this training and overall, um, and so and, and I know you have a separate designation as a, a Tai Chi easy leader, practice leader rather, and yes. I'm wondering if this training is more intensive. How is it different from that training? I'm kind of trying to figure out where I belong. Sure. Well, generally we consider. Uh, Qigong to be easier and more accessible for the population that you will be teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, then <clears throat> the Tai Chi that we teach in this in these in level two uh, is basically covers what you just called Tai Chi easy and then also adds on to that. And so because we're so concerned about being sure that everything that we do has an easy feature. So we've, Qigong is inherently easy. 
because things are mostly bilateral and there's not m much walking around and you can even do it pretty much sitting down. But with Tai Chi Easy, what we do is we make the Tai Chi into a kind of Qigong so that it can be done without walk, without stepping, without having to learn something as complex as particular steps that go with. And um, but then it also has a component, the easiest part of level two, which is the Tai Chi Easy portion, shall we say. Uh, is very easy because it's done sitting or standing just like Qigong. And then it graduates to uh, walking. So it really kind of matters. Um, my experience have been doing this for a really long time and I've trained a lot of people in our longer teacher trainings and in the more compact uh, Tai Chi Easy training, which is absolutely fantastic and I would urge you to investigate that and if you do a little clicking here and there, uh, Rhonda might even give you a, uh, uh, a link to the, the Healer Within Foundation which is typically mm -hmm. where, heal, where Tai Chi Easy practice leader trainings happen and you can uh, investigate that. So shortest way to say it is that Qigong is a perfect entry point and everything that we teach in level one is programmed to be very accessible and take you deeply into soothing the autonomic nervous system. And then level two, Tai Chi, is much more about brain plasticity and uh, maximizing the capacity to coordinate. So when you think of the populations that you would be working with, or if I think with back to the people that we've trained, almost always what happens is that people end up do going mostly with the Qigong portion, which is very accessible, and the easiest part of Tai Chi Easy, which is the Qigong-like version of Tai Chi. And then there's a, f a smaller number of people who actually end up teaching the more complex levels of Tai Chi just because of the 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 executives are all too busy uh, the and the athletes are busy doing something else and the older people aren't really that adaptable to complex brain plasticity maximization experiences and so we've very purposefully we, we have a soft takeoff and then we build a bridge to the highest level of Tai Chi complexity, but almost all of our t teachers or practice leaders are operating in the kind of easy takeoff towards the bridge side of things. Hope that was useful. Yes, very much so. Thank you. Thank you. And I appreciate it. If I could offer something for you, Ellen, as well, because you had, um, you know, you had asked, like, like, where do you belong? And I would say if you have a daily Qigong practice and you've been bitten by the Qigong bug and it's something that you like and you enjoy and you like to share, I would say level one is a perfect place for you because you will resonate with everything that's in it and then it will open the door for you to step into level two if you so choose to. And you will be able to, you will be able to learn everything that is presented and you will be able to teach everything that is presented to you in these trainings. Okay. Thank you, Oli. I appreciate that as well. That's pretty much what I was thinking and, and that and and you and Roger both helped to answer that for me. So I'll see you in the training. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I am not seeing any other questions. And but if you think of something, I think Rhonda has given you the information to contact her in the chat. Um, or give a call and don't hesitate. Oh, we do. Rhonda. Yes. Well, I just had a quick comment because there's some little secret features of level one that I love uh, that don't really jump out right away. One is like the practice sessions that they offer in addition, and they're not mandatory. It's if you want extra practice, you can get practice sessions with our faculty and our co-leads. And it's a good opportunity to see other styles of teaching. That's a great thing. 
The next, my little other little favorite thing is you also get a copy of The Most Profound Medicine, which is uh, a ebook PDF on the physiology of Qigong written by Dr. Yanka. Uh, the mastermind sessions, there's usually like at the end of each module, there'll be a mastermind session with different focuses uh, that something you might be interested in. I think those are just worth so much. And then at the conclusion of the training, if you've never done II training, you get a copy of Breath Medicine. It's wonderful. So anyway, I wanted to share that. Thanks. Thank you, Rhonda. Okay, so it's already been a, a long evening, but we I do want to end with just a very short little snippet of uh, three of the practices. And so I invite you to sit or stand and we're going to go through three of the oh you lost me i froze <laughs> uh, Lori, we can still hear you uh well, oh you well, can okay i am like uh, gone. So Jennifer or Oli, would you take them through the flow with the breath and a little massage? Because obviously I'm not moving. <laughs> <laughs> the universe is saying, let somebody else get up there. <laughs> sure. I, I'm happy to do flowing motion. And then maybe Oli, if you'd like to do a little bit of breath work and we can do it that way. So um Three treasures, body or posture, breath and mind. So if you're going to stay seated as I am, just let yourself move around a little bit. Maybe sway back and forth. Find the most comfortable place for you in your chair right now. You're more than welcome to stand to do these practices. Ah, you're always welcome to do a sigh of relief. Inhale. Ah, audible sigh. And we are lengthening upward. We are rooting downward. We're creating space in the body. So think of your roots spiraling down from your sacrum, from the soles of your feet. Think of your spine lengthening, creating space in, in between each vertebrae. I'm going to scoot forward on my chair to give my arms a little bit more room. We are breathing deep. So one way to know that you're doing diaphragmatic breathing is put your hands on your tummy and let the breath raise those hands slightly. So we will be constantly doing diaphragmatic breathing. You might have heard it as yogic breathing or abdominal breathing. And then letting the movement come from the center, let your arms go to either side. On the inhale, moving from the center, bring the arms up, the palms up, that is, and forward, and then down on the exhale. So we're rooting, we're lengthening upward. The awareness is coming from the center of our body, the movement that is. Inhale, and exhale, palms go down towards the floor. So oh, uh, flowing motion. Shoulders are relaxed. And the breath is slow, long, deep. And on this next inhale, feel the weight move towards the front of the feet. And on the exhale, the weight goes into the soles of the feet. Perhaps the toes rise up, keeping the balls of the feet on the ground. Inhale. And if you're standing, you can go onto the balls of the feet with a little bit of a balance challenge, maybe raising the heels slightly. Exhale, sink the weight into the heels of the feet. Keep the balls of the feet on the ground lifting the toes. And here we're already experiencing the shift into the parasympathetic aspect of the nervous system. 
the rest and digest, rest and restore. We'll just do a few more. Inhale, palms facing up. And exhale, palms face down. Rooting even more into the earth. Last one. Before we move on to the breath practice, just take a moment to notice. That was barely a few minutes. I feel more relaxed already. I, of course, have had practice at this, but it, it's truly amazing what we can do with our intention, our breath, and gentle movement. Let's move on to Oli. All right, thank you all for sticking around, those of you who are still here. So we'll just, just again, a little bite of the apple, one of the breath practices, one of several breath practices that we'll learn in the training is something called chi shi hu. Shi means inhale, hu means exhale. So a very simple practice, two inhalations, one exhalation. And, you know, I'm sitting in my chair, I'll use my hands to kind of demonstrate with an inhale, one inhalation, two inhalations, and a long exhalation. And we'll do that a couple different times with a couple different rhythms. You know, uh, the, the pulmonologist who originally popularized the acronym LSD breathing, his L wasn't long, it was light. And so I want to invite you to practice that type of inhalation when we're doing this. It does it, it's because it's two short little sips of breath. They're light breaths and a nice long, slow exhalation. So let's just move through this series in a couple different ways. And again, you can watch my hands to follow the breath pattern. We'll go nice and slow. We might introduce some pauses here or there. We might even speed it up a little bit. And you can really feel how profoundly we are able to create medicine for ourselves just by breathing. So beginning with the hands, nice and low at the bottom of the rib cage, and we'll do some shi shi hu breathing. So in through the nose and out through either the nose or the mouth. So just like this. She, she, who? This time we're going to hold at the top of the inhale. So hold and exhale. Holding at the bottom of the exhale. And again. One more like this. Returning to regular shi shi hu, we'll pick up the pace slowly. Like a train picking up steam. Five more. Two more. One more. Bonus. Big breath in. Long breath out. Return to normal breathing and feel what you feel, feel the tingling in your cheeks, in your palms. Breathe with your whole body. And yes, every cell in your body has a respiratory apparatus. 
So we did some movement, which helps to open up the channels and collaterals, which helps to get the blood circulating from the deep core of the body out into the extremities. The blood carries the oxygen. Every cell breathes oxygen. Oxygen is chi. We're bringing more chi into the cells so that they can be alive, so that they can be vital. So feel the vitality of every cell of your body and recognize that you have an innate capacity to affect the quality of that vitality with the focus of your mind, the movement of your body, the utilization of your breath. This is medicine. We can bring our hands together, we can rub our hands together, and with this medicine that we've created, we can also target certain areas of our body using touch, using tapping, using grasping, using stroking. So if there's an area of your body, if it's uh, an organ, if it's a joint or a muscle, if it's a place where it feels like emotions have been lodged, use your hands, direct your intention to that area. Where I need medicine is different than where you need medicine. So. Apply the medicine where you need it. Apply the medicine that you have just created by yourself, for yourself. Apply it where it's needed and recognize that that's something you can do anytime for free. And this is something that as a Qigong teacher, an IIQTC certified Qigong and Tai Chi practice leader, you are empowered to teach other people how to do for themselves as well. So thank you for practicing with us. And I'll hand it back over to Lori for some closing comments. If she's still with us, if her internet connection has held up. If not, I'll hand it back to Roger. Yeah, we're going to, um, yeah, uh, Lori wanted to hand it back over to me. Um, <clears throat> not going to be able to uh, join us for the rest and going to figure out her tech stuff, which always comes up with Zoom. So I see that, um, Roger, you're going to be doing our closing today. So um, I think I'm just going to hand it off to you. And we'll make it super brief. I'm so glad you could all be here. Um, thank you for taking the time to meet up with some of our most precious and enlightened graduates. Uh, the world needs thousands and thousands and thousands of Qigong and Tai Chi teachers and practice leaders. So if the schedule for these particular trainings, either the online one or the live one, uh, are not convenient for you, check into Tai Chi Easy. That's the uh, Healer Within Foundation. Uh, there are Tai Chi Easy practice leader trainings there, and you can uh, go to the IIQTC website and you'll see the differences between uh, the long trainings and the shorter practice leader trainings. So there's a lot of ways to approach this. Um, we love to train teachers and probably out of the 3,000 plus people that we've trained in one form or another, uh, not everyone who's gone through level one has gone on to level two. Uh, a lot of people just love Qigong. And so there's just a lot of ways to be able to join, shall we say, this community of professionals who share the values that we are sharing with you now and we will be training you with. So let's leave it there. Wishing you a fantastic uh, 2024. Uh, and maybe you do or maybe you don't know, but in the Chinese calendar, we're coming up on the Year of the Dragon. And that should be exciting. It's actually supposedly a really good time to start something new, uh, add something to your uh, to your profession, or shift from what you were doing to something completely new as a profession. So uh, we'll leave it there, and uh, wish you well. And I'm going to just. Uh, stop talking <laughs> and let the powers that be the people who are punching the buttons 
Uh, in the meantime, let's wave and um, bow and